What's up guys, my name is Joe and welcome back to Budget Breakdown. This is of course the show where we take a look at different hair care brands and see as a whole for what they charge, are they good, kind of good, or not so good. Today we're focusing on Axe, a brand that I'm sure most of you stumble upon at least a couple times a month in different like shops and stuff. Interestingly enough, uh, Axe has actually only been in the USA since 2002. Um, I don't know, it's just always, you know, it's one of those brands that sounds like they've probably been around since 1963 or something. Anyways, we're taking a look at and testing four different Axe products today, but before diving in, let's see what we're dealing with. Axe hair products will set you back between 10 to $12, depending on where you pick them up, and you'll be getting 2.64 ounces in a jar, so I'd say it's fairly standard drugstore pricing. Maybe a tad bit more than, than some others, I think VO5 is a little cheaper, but you know, it's, it's kind of there in the middle. The packaging is pretty standard drugstore packaging, but I will say, as far as drugstore packaging goes, Axe does it well. It's one of my favorite drugstore packaging designs for sure. And interesting fact about all of the products, uh, if you take a look at the back, they all say that they are for short to medium hair lengths and medium to long hair lengths, except for this natural look, which says um, it's for all lengths. So I think both of them, they're pretty, every product pretty much says they're for all lengths. If you've seen any of the other budget breakdowns I've done, you know I'm not a fan when companies say that their products are for every single hair length, because it's just not true. Each product is made for different reasons. So, you know, let's not be so lazy. I'm gonna pause there, because I hear Dinty coming back with the dog. Come here, Rio, you're just in time. Good boy, come here. Yeah, nap time for you. All right, that's enough of the overview. Let's go ahead and get into it. Starting out with Clean Cut, the first of the four. Axe claims that this is a classic pomade with a medium hold and a shine finish. Taking a look under the hood, you get a really strange color. It's very sparkly and, and otherworldly. Um, definitely some galaxy vibes going on. The other thing that you'll notice is that this is a pretty standard looking water-based pomade. Uh, it's nothing new, nothing special about that. There's a lot of drugstore water-based pomades that are kind of, kind of just gel in disguise. Scooping it out and breaking it down works just like most other water-based pomades, easy to break down and easy to apply. However, this stuff has a very overpowering scent. It's kind of like uh, chemicals and gasoline mixed together and especially once you scoop it out and emulsify it, break it down and put it in your hair, that smell really comes out and it's it's very strong. The smell does fade a little bit after use, but it still does, you know, you can still smell it. Since it is a pomade, I'm taking a couple scoops and going for a classic slick back since that's how most people would be using this product. And now let's talk about the result. As you can see, after first applying, it's definitely slick and definitely shiny, which is as advertised. In fact, uh, it's probably a little bit too shiny for most people. But the true test of a pomade is how is it performing a couple hours into the day? And this is where I kind of have mixed results. First of all, the shine does stay all day long and it doesn't harden up like a typical gel pomade. So those are two good things. However, it's not really that strong and a couple hours later my hair needs to be recombed. So unfortunately because of this I can't recommend this for people who need a slick style all day long unless you don't mind retouching every few hours. From there we've got the spiked up look. First of all I should note that my hair is the longest that it's ever been for any budget breakdown episode. So some of these products might not be the most ideal uh, you know type of product for my hair length. That said on all of their jars it did say it's for every hair type so you know I'm, we'll put that one on Axe. Spiked Up Look claims to be an extreme hold glue with an extreme hold and a natural finish. And let me tell you, when you open it up, it smells and looks just like a glue. In fact, the look of the product is a little off-putting. I'm not sure how well it comes across here, but there's like a thin, kind of watery, glossy layer and it looks pretty weird. Scooping it out and breaking it down, I mean, it's just like Elmer's glue. This looks and feels like glue in a tub. When applied, initially it goes in easily while it's still wet, but it does quickly dry down and quickly get tuggy. I accidentally didn't record the application process for this product, but basically it started out easy and it quickly got very difficult. As for the result, initially it seemed true to the name as in the hold was pretty extreme. Now I thought that this would be a good product for shorter hair types that can kind of benefit from that extreme hold, almost, you know, stuck in place, spiked up look. Uh, that that short hair would go for but after like two minutes it actually got soft again and became easy to run my hands through the thing is even though it looks like it works for my hair my hair ended up feeling really dry and kind of straw-like and the application process just wasn't worth the end result. I don't actually mind the finish of the product, but the process to get there would uh, have me reach in for something else. From there, we've got Urban Messy Look, which claims to be a flexible paste and to be a medium hold with a matte finish. And if you take a look at the product itself, it's kind of like an off-white with a slight blue tint to it. As for the scent, 
I mean, it, it resembles Play-Doh a little bit, but it's pretty understated. Uh, it's, it's not a problem, it's fine. As for breakdown, it feels like a very standard drugstore paste. It has an easy scoop out, um, yet like a chunky consistency that turns smooth and creamy when emulsifying. And good news here, it goes in easily with very minimal tug and pull. As for the result, it works very nearly to what I expected as a standard paste product. The only thing that threw me off guard was it was actually more shiny than I expected considering it says it's a matte finish. It was pretty shiny when I applied it and the shine did kind of die down about 10 minutes after application and my hair was left mostly natural looking. Still a little shiny but more than how it looked was how it felt. If you need to retouch your hair you're left with this kind of slippery um, oily semi greasy residue on your fingers and at the end of the day it did say it was a matte finish which is not. It's not too shiny I'd say it's more of kind of like a natural finish. This is a good go-to for anyone who is looking for something that's going to be a little bit more natural. It's more on the medium hold side um, but uh, yeah, basically out of the bunch this is the one that I'd be going back to the most. And finally we've got Natural Look Understated Cream which claims to be an understated cream, styles and conditions lightly, has a light hold and a natural finish. Breakdown and applications, no surprise here. It says it's a cream, it acts like a cream, it's really easy to break down, it's really easy to apply. Getting into the results, personally I don't really have much of a use for uh, creams as a post styler. I'm never like, you know what I'm gonna finish my hair off today with a cream. I just, I don't ever say that or do that. Creams as a pre-styler though, that's a different story and definitely can be beneficial. Anyways, it ended up being more shiny than I expected. It did say natural shine, it's more shiny than that. And the hold and control was really light, which came to no surprise because that's what it said. The only way that I would really see this working is if your hair is naturally quite dry and you need a product, something like this to balance you out. You could take a little bit of this as a pre-styler before you blow dry your hair uh, and it's gonna help add just some natural shine back into your hair if your hair is on the more dry side. But other than that uh, very specific use, this is a pass for me. With all of that out of the way, are Axe products good, kind of good, or not so good? Eh, kind of good. I know it sounds like I've been quite harsh and critical, but that's the point of this series is to really give you a good idea of how everything works, uh, whether you buy it all together or separately. What we have to remember though, is that these are products that are priced very competitively and are just made for the mass market. Mostly for guys who are like, eh, I need a hair product. Oh, this one looks nice. This one looks good. I'll go for this one. You know who I'm talking about. Your best friend, Billy. Does anyone have a best friend named Billy, really, though? Actually, my dad, although Billy's technically his cousin. <clears throat> Anyways, with that in mind, though, comparing Axe to other drugstore products, uh, you know, they're pretty good. What I appreciate the most is that all of these products are clearly formulated differently. I've seen a lot of drugstore companies just take a base um, formula and just slightly tweak it and then release it as a new product. I think I, I criticized VO5 of doing this where a lot of their products felt very similar and just slightly different. But with Axe, they all look and work completely differently. But that's just my two cents. If any of the Axe products are your go-to, let me know which ones you like down below, which ones you like, which ones you don't like, and which products you wanna see featured on the next episode of Budget Breakdown. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see everybody next time.